Is joining me now from the right, strategist Ford O'Connell, and Skyping in for the left, Ari Rabenhaf, who is uh, the host of the agenda and a former advisor to Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid. We thank you both for being with us. Ford, let's begin with you first. On the e issue of illegal immigration, what is going on here now? Is the administration simply incompetent, asleep at the wheel, or were there machinations which brought about the current crisis? Well, I think part of it is two things. First, I think the administration was asleep at the wheel because basically they've been saying for several years now the border's secure, when in fact we know it isn't, and apparently they've obviously become captives of their own rhetoric and actually think it is secure now. On the other hand, this is a part of really a crisis of policy within the Obama administration. They seem to fail to grasp the idea that as long as people think you can get backdoor amnesty or asylum, they're going to keep coming. So what President Obama needs to do is take out his handy pen and phone and essentially suspend the Wilberforce Trafficking Act of 2008 such that the Central American miners are treated just like Canadian and Mexican nationals and they're shipped back in 48 hours. If you don't stem the reason why they're coming here, they're going to keep coming irrespective of how much deportation data you keep citing. Ari, uh, your turn to respond uh, to what Ford had to say. Look, I think this is a crisis of inaction. I think this is, we've known, and I, I've said this on your show, um, we've known that immigration has been a crisis in this country. It's been a crisis that Congress has refused to deal with. We have a bipartisan solution that's passed the Senate, and it's been held up basically for years for no other purpose than politics. We could have had long-term solutions to the immigration crisis. Instead, we end up in these crisis moments which don't actually produce good policy for the long term. Uh, Ari, just one quick question. We'll get to the comments of, uh, of a Democrat congressman. But if those on the other side of the border were eager to register as Republicans, would you be embracing the comprehensive immigration reform you're extolling right now as the uh, solution to all these problems? I actually assume, I know this is counterintuitive, I actually assume many will come here and register as Republicans. I frankly don't don't care what political party they register for. I don't think many should become citizens immediately. I think they're, we should establish a path to citizenship, but that path should be a, a long path and you have to you should have to earn American citizenship. So I don't think actually voting is part of this. We have a system where we have a number of people in our economic system who aren't on a normalized status and that harms our economy. And I think that's why you see the Chamber of Commerce and the unions coming together and saying we need to fix this. Mm -hmm. JD, let, let me jump yeah. in on okay, one go thing. Ahead, I, feel, I do agree that this has been a crisis of politics on both sides. But Ari, the one thing that it, it, it hurts a lot of the Democrats' arguing point is saying that the border is secure. And what I and it hasn't been. I grew up on the Texas border. I grew up, a, you know, a couple hundred miles from Henry Cuellar's district. And I understand that this has this has been going on as long as I've been alive. My concern here, though, is that if you read the L.A. Times, which is no friend of conservatives, and a lot of other newspapers in the Southwest, they're telling you over and over in interviews with these migrant children that essentially the reason why they continue to come here is because of the understanding that they will be granted asylum either now or down the line, or they may get some form of backdoor amnesty. And that is the real problem. Until you cut off the incentive to come here, people are going to continue to go no matter how much border walls I throw up. Now, I still think we do need to border, secure the border, but you see my point. Well, first, I think the border isn't just in the South. Plenty of people arrive. For example, I grew up in New York, and there are plenty of people who arrive at Kennedy Airport every day and overstay their visas. We, you know, Focusing simply on the southern border also doesn't address the full quantity. I, I totally and agree with you. 40% of the illegal immigrants in the United States right now have overstayed their visas. I agree 100% with you. We need to streamline that process, but there's a lot of laws within the visa rules that are essentially like this Wilberforce Trafficking Act that can be used against us. And we're going to get to all of that. Duly noted, gentlemen, a couple of comments you made. Uh, first of well, here on the screen is reference to the William Wilberforce Trafficking Victim Protection Act. I want to get to that in a second. Let me bring it back to something both of you said, and then we'll get to the Wilberforce Act. Uh, first of all, uh, Ari, you used the term counterintuitive, and Ford, you brought up the name of Democratic Congressman Henry Cuellar. I'm going to combine those two. We have Henry Cuellar with a remark that Ari, to your ears, uh, well, you might think is counterintuitive, at least in terms of the announced policy of the administration. Here is Congressman Cuellar uh, talking to CNN. 
Uh, with all due respect to the administration, they're one step behind. They should have seen this coming a long time ago. They should have seen this a long time ago because we yep. saw those numbers increasing. And so there he is saying the administration is behind on this. Now, Ari, uh, your former boss weighed in on the situation. Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid, who schedules the legislation, uh, meeting a gaggle of reporters in front of the world's uh, <clears throat> greatest deliberative body by some standards, I had this to say to the press. We'll listen to him, and then I want to get your reaction to both those statements. I think before we start uh, rushing to judgment as to specifics on it, something we have to do it's something we have to do how we get there i really don't know at this stage that that senator harry reed commenting on this supplemental approach appropriation of close to four billion dollars ari to my ear that sounds like we have to pass it and then we'll worry about what's in it it's strangely it's strangely evocative of nancy pelosi on obamacare tell me where i'm wrong well I think congress has a lot of power here john boehner will have to pass it through his chamber so he will be able to write in what he wants, and and the two will come together. So I don't I don't really think that's an issue. And as to Henry Henry Clayar's remark, I, I think he's right. Look, you can't deny that our entire government, the legislative and executive branch, have been behind the ball on this issue and need to catch up. And we do have a problem right now. And these camps where these children are being kept are a huge problem, and we need to deal with it. Uh, go ahead, Ford. Well, obviously, I, I think that Ari's glossing over it a lot here. Basically, President Obama, nothing stopped President Obama from, he doesn't like to work with Congress. He can suspend the Wilberforce Act. But secondly, they've known this has been coming. They didn't fall asleep at the wheel. They didn't really care. In 2011, basically, we had 15,949 migrant children. By 2014, we're at 52,000, expected up to 90. Here's the deal. In, in January of 2014, basically, HHS put out a contract knowing this was coming. They don't really care, J.D. This is one time I fully agree with you. The administration has been asleep at the wheel overall on immigration, but this is something that they want to use as a flashpoint to make a humanitarian case to basically roll Republicans on immigration. Well, you, you see what's happening here, but to be fair about this, Ford, and this is where we may part company to a certain degree, uh, Mr. Obama's predecessor, George W. Bush, also had to deal with the issue of immigration reform. I had some interesting conversations during my days in office with President Bush. Here is what President George W. Bush had to say back in 2012. America is a nation of immigrants. Immigrants have helped build the country that we have become, and immigrants can help build a dynamic tomorrow. Not only do immigrants help build our economy, they invigorate our soul. America can be a lawful society and a welcoming society at the same time. Uh, As our nation debates the proper uh, course of action relating to immigration, I hope we do so with a benevolent spirit and keep in mind the contribution of immigrants. Blurring the description of immigrants and illegals, Ford, how is Mr. Bush's policy different from that of Mr. Obama? Well, when he made that statement, I didn't hear a policy prescription. All he said is we're dealing with people, the rule of law, and if we do this right, we can actually improve America's economy. I'm an immigration reform proponent, but let me say this. Let's go back to his 2007 law that he was trying to push that failed in the United States Senate. I will say the following. His was more bipartisan than President Obama's. It was not a great bill either, like the one that was before the Senate. But I will say, while they both looked at it for a pathway to citizenship, he was more focused on securing the border and streamlining the visa and basically the bill that came before the Senate was a way for the administration to make Republicans walk away and use it as a political tool. Ari, a final word goes to you. There's a minute left. Is there really any difference between the Bush approach and that of President Obama? I think George W. Bush would have signed into law the comprehensive immigration bill that passed the Senate. So I actually don't see the difference. I was supportive of Bush's efforts in 2007. I thought it was, I thought it was something better than what we had. I think this is going to be a compromise policy, and I think we're going to, you know, the Bush solution, the Obama solution are fairly similar. Well, gentlemen, we thank you for your candor. To my ears, when I hear comprehensive immigration reform, I hear that term amnesty, and so there was at least bipartisanship it's 2007 and this bill that came out of the Senate more recently. Thank you both for your time and your input. We look forward to hearing from you again.
So you heard some distinctions, but was there a real difference between the policies of George W. Bush and the current occupant of 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, Barack Obama? We'd love to get your comments. Why don't you tweet them to us at Newsmax TV, hashtag America's Forum. There's a new way to send comments, NewsmaxTV.com slash comment. And don't forget Facebook. We'll be right back.